All right, let's work on the second part here. But as with last time, before I work on the second part, I'm just going to clear out some of the space that we used for the first part so that we have room to think about the second. There is a little bit here that's going to be worth keeping a hold on. And in particular, as we said before, we need to know where i ends up in order to know what's going to happen in the next part, because the next part is, is all about uh, increasing i and then bounding how many iterations we're going to go by how much i gets up to. So i++ plus plus in this loop, and then we keep going while n is not divisible by i. So let's remind ourselves what i got to uh, at the end of the loop. At loop end, i is the next power of 2 greater than or equal to n. And then remember, uh, just after the loop here, we divide i by 2. So just before our second loop, before 2, i is the next power of 2 less than n because we divided it by 2. So previously it was greater than or equal to n. Now it's less than n, but it's still a power of 2. So that gets us set up for this loop. And uh, we can kind of now, by the way, give an English description of what this whole block at the start was doing. It was finding the last power of 2 that's less than n. Now this next loop is counting up until we reach a value of i that divides n evenly which is tricky. Um, we know when i is equal to n, it will divide n evenly. So we can upper bound this fairly easily, the, the number of iterations. So an upper bound is that it's going to go well enough iterations to get from i up to n. I'm always off by one on this. Is that n minus i iterations, or is it n minus i plus 1, or is it n minus i minus 1? I find a, a good way to work that out of my head is just do a small example. So, you know, let's say n is 7, and I'm going to pick a prime number so I don't have to worry about this divisibility thing. Uh, so if n, this is just my scratch work here, if n is equal to 7 and i is equal to 4, uh, let's see, i is 4, we do an iteration of the loop, i is 5, we do an iteration of the loop, that's number 2, i is 6, we do an iteration of the loop, that's number 3, i is 7. Ah, so we're going to do n minus i iterations. So an upper bound is that we do n minus i iterations. Uh, notice, by the way, that i starts out being less than n, which is important, because otherwise we could just go forever, right? There's nothing to stop this loop if i gets larger than n. Uh, but in our previous part, we did note it's the next power of 2 less than n. So that ought to be fine. Now, maybe we should just leave this at the upper bound for a moment, because trying to get more precise about this is, is going to be messy. Uh, we have to think about divisibility. Uh, maybe we should try some examples. And now I kind of wish we still had our table. Right, so it's the next power of 2 smaller. Uh, let's, let's go up to um, when i is equal to 8, uh, what values of n will that happen for? So that'll happen for 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. But not for, uh, oh yes, yes, for 16 as well. It's the next power of 2 smaller for 16. Uh, but not for 17. For 17, i would be 16 instead. So... Um, 8, 8 doesn't divide 9, 8 doesn't divide 10, nor does 9, 8 doesn't divide 11, oh, 8 doesn't divide 12, 8 doesn't divide 13, 8 doesn't divide 14, 8, 8 does divide 16 here. Um, so normally the value of i is more than half of the value of n, because except in the case where n is a power of 2, which is becomes... Uh, exponentially rare, that is to say it happens in a logarithmic number of cases. Um, except for those times when n is exactly a power of 2, i is more than half as large as n, so it's not going to divide i. So so this upper bound is actually really good. Uh, we, we get lucky every once in a while in the sense that n is divisible by i because i is exactly n over 2, uh, but generally speaking uh, what we get instead is that uh, i is a little bigger or a lot bigger than n over 2 
in which case this will go the full n minus i iterations. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. We know it goes n minus i iterations. We also know i ends up as n or n over 2. And that latter is a very rare case. OK. So what about the runtime? Uh, well, if we're assuming that divisibility takes constant time, and you know that really is a question, but let's just assume divisibility takes constant time, then each iteration of this loop takes constant time. We're going n minus i iterations. We said that i is uh, somewhere between about half as big as n up to almost as big as n, All right? When when i is eight and n is nine, generally speaking, when n is a power of two plus one, i is almost as big as it. Uh, but certainly, again, an, an upper bound on this, just in terms of n, would be O of n. There will be about n over 2 iterations, somewhere between 1 iteration and n over 2 iterations, uh, or 0 iterations in the case where i is exactly n over 2. OK, uh, we've got an upper bound on the number of iterations. We've got the runtime of each iteration. We've got what looks like it might be a good enough upper bound on the runtime. It might not be perfect, because so far we've only spent logarithmic time. Now we're going to spend linear time in many cases, but not in all cases. We might have to think a little bit more. Uh, let's come back to that when we see what happens in descend from and see if we need to, uh, if we need to be more clever here. But I think that's all we need. Ah, yes, and we know what i ends up as. That'll be helpful in the next part, since it too is dependent on i.